Hey, I'm Brian Van, SportBikeTrackHere.com. Today we're going to talk motorcycle boots. Okay, before we dig in, for those of you that don't know, I am the founder and owner here. I've been doing this for well north of 15 years. The goal of a lot of these videos is just to show you what I have learned over the years to help you make the right choice for yourself. The best way to save money is not waste it on stuff that does not get the job done. So, motorcycle specific footwear, okay? There is a reason why you should ride in footwear designed to be on a motorcycle. A very big reason. I'm going to show you right now. You look at these two shoes I have on the table, especially this one. I mean, this looks pretty formidable, right? Goes over the ankle, lots of protection, right? Big, heavy, beefy sole. It's going to protect your foot. This Alpine Star tennis shoe I have here, this is not a riding shoe. This is a casual shoe, okay? But, I mean, let's face it. They style a lot of the other stuff to look a lot like a tennis shoe. So why not just, hell, save the money, right? And just wear the casual shoe. It's more comfortable to walk around in. It's fantastic. Here is the number one reason. You look at this, and Caleb was shocked when I first did this. He's like, no way. Look at how thick that sole is. It's going to be super strong. Okay. Can you see that? I'm just literally folding that up. I'm just some old guy. This tennis shoe. Obviously, if I can do that one, I can do this one. When you tip over on a bike, you have a crash on a bike, there is always the possibility that something lands on top of it. What is your motorcycle weigh? It really depends on what you're riding. You know, you get a race prep ninja. I mean, that thing's, you know, going to be, what, 300-ish pounds, okay? Imagine that force coming down on here. You get a bigger bike, right, a big touring bike. Coming down here, there's a lot of small bones in your foot. It's a really sensitive part of your body. You smash that, you're going to have a bad day. We'll go to the most casual piece we have here on the table. This is a, a CD. This is a, a, you know, a motorcycle-specific piece, right? And on all the boots on the table, this is bar none, right, going to be the least protective piece here. And let's start off with that sole. There's no way. All right, there's no way I can collapse that. And it's the same way for every piece here on the table. The insert in the sole, right, the, the heavy-duty shank is designed to be basically side-to-side crush-proof. You'll also note with a lot of the footwear, and it can vary from piece to piece a little bit, right, how they, how they, they fold and bend and articulate, you'll find varying levels of that. You can see this one only really wants to move right about there, right? You know, where this one's folding up a whole bunch easier. That is the number one reason why you don't want to ride your motorcycle in footwear that's not specifically designed to be ridden in. From there, we still have a tremendous amount of options to choose from. Okay, so we're shopping for that new pair of boots for the street. The first question we need to ask ourselves is do I want a short pair of riding shoes, which are going to be more comfortable, more convenient, or do I want to go for the full-size riding boot? At face value, you would think there's a lot more protection to be had with the full-size riding boot. And there are cases where that can be true, right? Using this model as an example, understanding there are variants within the full-size boot family, and we're going to cover that more as we dive in here, Using this particular boot as an example, which would be a good street riding, maybe touring sport boot, right? The protection that it offers is not very different from what we see here with this short riding boot. The only real tangible difference is going to be the armor plate up here in the shin area. That's going to help protect your shin from impact. How common are lower leg shin area injuries? I would say not very common. The reason I say that is... The ankle protection, in a lateral sense, this boot offers is minimal at best. Really no different than you see over here. As I said earlier, within the full-size boot family, there are variants, okay? There are boots that really do a lot to protect your ankle in a lateral sense. 
If that's something that's really important to you, you need to stick with first a full size boot and second, you need to choose one that has a hinge system that's going to work to protect your ankle. We're going to cover that as we go a little deeper into this video. But once again, focusing between these two, right? Each of these is going to offer impact and abrasion resistance, right? In the ankle area, these go up above the ankle, okay? Impact resistance here, here, abrasion resistance, crush proof sole. So in the end, for a street rider, right, a quality short riding boot and a quality non-race level full size boot are super similar. Okay, still focusing on street riding now. Short boots on the table. To waterproof or not to waterproof? That is the question, right? Let's start off by asking yourself, when do you do the majority of your riding? For someone like me, that's a simple question. I like to ride when it's nice out. I like to ride when it's sunny out, when it's hot out. I'm not going out and riding in the rain. Just not going to do it because I don't think it's any fun. If you're like me, I am going to steer you every time towards ventilated footwear. At this point, I'm doing all my riding on the track. My son, Max, same thing, right? Everything we're riding in is fully ventilated. He's been out there in some rain with his ventilated stuff. You get a little wet. No big deal. It dries off. But I got to tell you, on those nice days, and those rides are the best of the best, the ventilated footwear just makes the ride that much more enjoyable because it helps to keep your feet as cool as you possibly can while you're adding this protective layer to it. Waterproof footwear. Okay, let's say in a lot of street riders, we're going to be out there in like an Aramid jean, right? And let's say you have a, a waterproof shoe on. Okay, and I'm not picking on this shoe, but this is a good point. Caleb made this point. If you don't have a pair of waterproof pants that go over the top of the gator of the waterproof shoe and it rains, guess what? That rain is going to go inside your waterproof shoe where it's going to stay because it's waterproof, right? That's something you need to keep in mind. Something else really important is what the waterproof membranes in the different riding shoes. We have varying levels. Gore-Tex is the king, okay? That stuff is as breathable as it gets. I snowmobile in Gore-Tex stuff. It is breathable. My feet get just a little bit clammy, my Gore-Tex boots, right? The further away you move from Gore-Tex, right, as the price gets a little lower, right, the bottom line is you lose breathability at every price point and they get more and more clammy. If you plan to ride in nice hot weather in waterproof footwear, you can expect your feet to get clammy. Okay, now we're going to break down, right, the differences that we find in the full size boots. Before I do that, there is something I do want to point out. It can be relevant to some riders, not most, but to some. And it's going to be that most of, if not every single pair of the full size boots, like the sport boots, this is what we're focused on right now, that we offer, have replaceable toe sliders available, right? If you're a rider that corners low and maybe your body position is not fantastic or you have OEM rear sets and you're dragging your toes all over the place, those replaceable toe sliders can be a reason to choose a full size set of boots, even if it's not really any more protective than the shorter riding boot, simply for the reason that you'd be able to replace this toe slider. When you look at a short pair of riding shoes like this, while this does have the appearance of a toe slider, it is not replaceable. It's an integrated piece, right? It'll take a little more to wear through that than it would the microfiber, but ultimately you will wear through it and you won't be able to do anything about it except for get yourself a new pair of boots. So that could be a reason to go with that full size boot over that one. But from there, focusing on these now, let's say you're hardcore street, some track days maybe, and or racing, right? The biggest thing to ask yourself is what level of ankle protection do I want? Do I want high end protection? Do I want some protection in a lateral sense or am I looking for very minimal? Very minimal is gonna be a boot like this that doesn't offer any bracing, external or internal, right? You'll have good protection in the toe box, in the heel, right? Ankle abrasion and impact, but none of the lateral stuff. Looking at the Alpine Star SMX6, this offers one external hinge, but nothing on the inside. So when you go to flex it outward, right, roll out, it won't allow you to do that. 
but it will allow it to roll towards the inside. Now we're going to show you three other models, right? Two are really expensive. These are two of the best boots available today on the market, the CD Rex Alpine Star Super Tech R. It's both about $500. And then we have the RST Track Tech Evo 3. This is a sub $200 boot. I think somewhere $160 ish dollars. I didn't look on the site and check, but this one does offer ankle bracing both inside and outside. So you're going to have a very reasonable amount of lateral ankle protection. Still have a replaceable toe slider, reinforced box, reinforced heel cuff. Moving on to these other two boots, there's just simply more engineering here. Okay, they do a lot of biomechanical research to make sure that, you know, these move right, right up to that point of injury and then kind of stop. And like this one has an inner booty, right? Very smooth design, nothing to catch on rear sets here, which is pretty nice. These are super comfortable and they allow you to go, you know, have that freedom of movement right up to the point of injury. Okay, but there's a lot of R&D that goes into these, the quality and, you know, where these are made. You know, they're just simply more expensive to bring to market, okay? Benchmark protection, feel, and comfort. Still a really solid piece and very affordable. As with everything in the catalog, there are a ton of options. In this video, I focused more on sport riding. That's really what we do here, sport bike track gear, right? It's not sport bike touring gear, it's sport bike track gear. So we're focusing on sport riders. The idea behind this video is just to help give you a good baseline to choose the right pair of footwear for yourself to avoid having to just replace something that's not even worn out. That is the single biggest way to waste money is to buy something that does not get the job done. That's the reason we're doing a lot of these videos. There's a lot of new riders into the sport now with the whole Corona apocalypse. I mean, you can't go do anything else, but you could still go ride your motorcycle. You could still go ride your snowmobile. You can go out and have a bunch of fun with your friends and family. If you're shopping for a new pair of boots, you watch this video and you find you're still left with some questions, leave those in the comments section. I answer all that stuff myself and I'm here to help you choose the right gear for your next ride.